Okay, so you can finish the feedback form at the break time if you're not finished. Um, we are talking about differences. We can remember this is one of the key points of this book. Probably this is, in this book, this is the key chapter which is different from the win-win negotiation, right? We have the website. The website is talking about the win-win negotiation, okay? Uh, did anybody look at any of the lectures on the Coursera website about negotiation from the University of Michigan? Mm -hmm. Remember I showed you the course, you signed up to the Coursera website. Uh, yes. Did you watch any of the lectures? Not yet? During the holiday time? The vacation time? But that one is win-win. That one doesn't have this part about analyzing the differences that much. Okay? So this is the, one of the important parts of the 3D negotiation that we're learning. Okay? So we discussed in the last class about uh, forecasts, and we said we can make contingent agreements when we have differences in forecasts. Okay? Uh, so here's another example for the forecasts. So we said that we could think about that before the class. So what do you think? We looked at this example in the last class. What's the solution? If you're trying to make a negotiation here, what kind of solution could you get? Bottom limit, 
profit of steam company, they should still make a profit, right? Upper limit, not too expensive for the oil company, okay? So the steam, the price can change between here and here. Do you understand? This is going to be a minimum profit for the steam company, and this is going to be maximum expensive, right? Possible for the for the oil company, okay? The oil company thinks that the price is going to be around here. The steam company thinks the price will be around here. Okay? Hopes. Okay? So they have different expectations, so we can manage in that way. So the two parties made a contingent agreement, again contingent agreement, which the steam price would vary in relation to oil prices. We could even make an agreement that it's not 100%. Oil price goes up, our one goes up just 50% of the increase in oil price, right? It doesn't have to be 100%. So just it's going to be oil price is $50 a barrel now, it goes up to $100, right? Steam price is now $50 for the same amount of energy, it goes up to $75, not $100. So the, if the oil price goes up, the steam price goes up 50%. So we can make that kind of deal, which means that we're both happy. Why? Because I think, hey, you're really silly. The so oil price is going to go down. You made a really bad deal, right? And you think the same about me. You think, oh, the oil price is going to go up. You made a really bad deal, right? So both of the people are happy with the agreement. Do you understand that, that solution? So we analyze the differences. So this is forecasts. Keyword for forecast is contingent, contingent agreement. Contingent means if this happens, this will happen. Okay? If the oil price goes up, steam price will go up 50%. So the next thing is risk. People have different ideas about risk. Okay? And then there's two, three different sections. The ability to bear risk influence risk or assess risk. So we're going to look at an example of each one. Okay. So first example, so we're going to look at about four or five different examples in this class. You look at the example and you guys have to try and find a solution and then we look at the solution. Okay. So the restaurant owner is selling his restaurant to his head chef. They agree a price of two million dollars. There was a complicating factor. An ongoing dispute with a contractor. Do you understand contractor? What is a contractor? Usually we're talking about construction in the US when we talk about contractors. Or interior design. Do you know interior design? Okay. So the owner had a dispute with a contractor. The owner did, didn't pay one million. So the contractor is owed one million. Okay. Contractor owed one million. So how much is the restaurant? If the contractor is owed one million and the restaurant has a value of two million, how much should the chef pay to the owner? One million. One million, right? So we have two million is the value. Two million minus one million. owed to the contractor is going to be one million. Okay? that the owner should get. Now, <clears throat> so the safest bet was that the contractor would be awarded about 500,000 through arbitration. So it's going to go to arbitration. Both of the chef and the owner have the same forecast. So there's no problem with the forecast. They both forecast in arbitration uh, the contractor would be awarded 500,000, right? So, if it gets to arbitration, if our prediction is correct, correct then it's going to be 2 million minus 0 0.5, it's going to be 1.5, okay? So, it, this will be if there is a arbitration and their prediction is correct. But the chef was concerned about the risk, right? The risk is, 
It could be this. Right? We predict in the arbitration, this is the most likely outcome. But there is a risk that the arbitration will decide we need to pay one million to the contractor. Okay? So Chef is very worried about the risk. So does the rest the Chef like bearing risk or doesn't like bearing risk? Doesn't like bearing risk. Bearing means accepting the risk. Okay? So the Chef doesn't want to bear the risk. Okay? They're very concerned about the risk of paying this extra money to the contractor. So because they have aversion to risk, they think this is going to be 1.3 million. So they, they are going to make 2 million, they're valuing the risk at 0 0.7, and they're going to say 1.3. They will pay 1.3 for the Okay, so Chef's risk. Okay, maybe not a million, but more than half a million. They don't like risk, so they say about 700,000, okay? On the other hand, the restaurant owner, they are much less averse to the arbitration risk. So restaurant owner is very rich, they have a lot of money, okay? So they don't mind about going to court. Okay, that's one problem that, you know, people who don't, or small companies, or people who don't have money have when they go to court with the wealthy company. Okay? The problem is the wealth company, very easy to go to court. Pay my lawyers. If I lose, I lose. No big problem. Right? Small company or a person like the chef, they lose, they could be bankrupt. Big problem. Okay? So maybe I don't want to go to court. So that's just a general problem. But in this case, the restaurateur is very rich. They don't think this is a big risk. They want to take this risk. Okay, they don't want to pay a million or pay 700,000. They want to go to court and take this risk. They think it's 50-50. They'll get 500,000. Okay? So being much less adverse to the arbitration risk, he assessed it at its expected value and didn't want to pay more than 500,000 to avoid it. So he would accept 1.5 million or more. So what should the two negotiating parties do? So try to find a number in, in millions about how much. Can we make an agreement here between the chef and the owner? Okay. So is the, would the owner be okay with getting one million? The chef pays the owner one million. Is the owner going to be okay? Me? No. No, he's not. Right? The owner says, "I want, I want to take the, I, I want to take the risk. I want to go to court and get this situation." Okay? Is the owner going to be okay with paying one point three million? No, because she wants to bear the risk. She wants to bear the risk and go to court, right? So we have to try and find a solution here, right? So discuss with your partner and think, how, how can you find a solution? They don't go to court. Hmm? So discuss with your partner first, right? See what they think about your idea. It's a little bit complicated one. But that's your job, right? You have to try and find a deal. Make a deal. So we have different options. We can have the owner can take the court, can take the court case, or the owner can transfer the case, right? It means the case is the chef, right? After the chef buys the restaurant. So we have one combination of either this or this. The owner accepts the case, keeps the case, or they transfer it to the chef. Okay? And then the combination of this with some amount of money that the chef pays for the restaurant. So discuss with your partner. What do you, how, what, how much money should be paid? 
And should the owner keep the case or transfer the case to the chef? Do you have any question about this part? Try to find a deal that's going to be acceptable to the two parties. These were all if the owner transfers to the chef. Which one? First one. Can't take it. Why? That's correct. Why? The owner keeps the case separate from the restaurant. Okay? Why? Because the average of the two cases mm -hmm. is 1.4 uh, million dollars. The first term owner uh, guarantee to the chef if they win in the arbitration, then mm -hmm. uh, he will uh, give a uh, guaranteed money to the chef. So if the owner takes the case, the chef has no risk, right? About the case. Yeah. Why is that better in this case? Who likes risk and who doesn't like risk? Chef doesn't like risk. The chef doesn't like risk, and the owner is, is okay with the risk, okay? So if the owner is okay with the risk, and the chef doesn't like the risk, then we might have a better agreement by letting the owner take the case. Because in this case, it was all the chef took the case. 1 million is not okay for the owner, 1.3 million is not okay for the owner, and 1.5 million is too expensive for the chef, okay? Is 1.4 million going to work? Still too expensive for the chef and still not enough for the owner. Okay? In the case that the owner transfers the case to the chef. So we have to think the other way around, right? The owner keeps the case himself. So now can you find a number? Now that we've decided the owner is going to take the case, what is a fair amount that discuss with your partner? The owner is going to take the case, so how much should the chef pay to the owner? For the restaurant.
what do you think would be a fair amount for the owner to accept? Right? The owner is taking the case. The owner is taking on the risk of the case, right? So the chef is able to buy the restaurant without, without this money, which is owed to the contractor. Doesn't have to pay the money to the contractor anymore. Okay, so how much is a fair price? I think the owner should get the hundred thousand dollar. How much total? Total is one point five million dollar. So if the owner gets one point five million. Right, we pay 1.5 million to the owner. Is the chef happy? No. Why not? Why is the chef not happy? Because they can get less of the money. How much did the chef assess this problem as? 0 0.7. 0 0.7. So if we take away this problem, how much is the chef willing to pay for the restaurant? 0 0.8. The value of the restaurant is 2 million. But we have this problem. Problem is worth 0 0.7. So if we take away this problem, how much is the restaurant worth to the chef? 1.3. Do you understand? Yes. So if I buy the restaurant, I think the court case is going to cost this much because I don't like the risk. It could cost this or it could cost this, right? So overall, I'll pay this much for the restaurant. Okay? So. Now that I take away the risk and I pay, uh, I think uh, the, I pay 1.5 to the owner. Is that an advantage for me or not? The owner. So then let's look from the side of the owner. So the owner assesses the risk at 0 0.5, right? Yes. And the owner has, you pay 1.5 to the owner, yes. right? Yes. Then it's about even for the owner, right? Not much advantage for them. They get, uh, they, they assess the risk anyway, 0 0.5. Plus 1.5 is going to be 2 million. They didn't get much advantage, okay? But uh, if we take sorry, if we take away this risk, then the chef should pay two million for the owner. Get pay two million, right? So the chef is getting 0.5 million of an advantage here, and the owner is getting no advantage. So what would be a fair amount to pay them? This doesn't look fair, right? If the owner gets no advantage, if I pay 1.5 to the owner, then that's okay. That's you know they are going to get the core case they think is half a million and so on, right? But what would be a fairer number than 1.5? 1.8, maybe. 1.8, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, right? The chef values the restaurant at two million without this problem, okay? So they're getting the cheaper than they thought, and the owner is also getting more than they think because of the risk, right? So they decided the chef should pay the owner 1.6 million for the restaurant, with the owner bearing the risk of the dispute. Under this arrangement, both sides benefit. The chef valued the restaurant for 2 million, okay? So the purchase offer of 1.6 million shifted the risk to the seller. That is, the chef would effectively pay only 400,000 to avoid the risk. So he would be better off. The restaurant owner was willing to take the risk on for 500,000. So the minimum price we said before, the owner was not happy with 1 million, with 1.3, with 1.5. But yes, he's happy with 1.5 or more. So 1.6 makes him happy. He gets 1.6. And he thinks this one is going to cost him half a million, is going to cost just half a million. So in the end, the result is really 2.1 for him. Then 
he gets an advantage and the other one has been gets an advantage. So both of the parties gained by shifting the risk to the more risk adverse to the less risk adverse. So this was the key point, right? We shift the risk for the owner. Okay? They have different idea about risk. Then compensating the less risk adverse party so we can share, share the game. So do you have any question about this one? Adverse means bit complicated. Dislike. Hmm? Adverse means dislike. Adverse means risk adverse means I don't like risk. Okay. Hmm. So risk adverse means I don't like risk. So the key point here is we saw at the start if the if the chef took the case, there was no way we could agree on the price. Okay? Chef is not happy with this price. 1.5 million, the chef pays 1.5 million and keeps the case, not happy. But the chef pays 1.6 million and the, the case disappears, is the chef happy? No. They pay 1.6 million with no case? Yes, of course they're happy, right? They think the restaurant is worth 2 million with no, with no case. Okay, with this, with this case, they could, the restaurant might be worth only 1 million. And their value is 1.3. Okay? So they make this its advantage for both sides. Okay? Do you have any question? No? So then the next one is influencing risk. So let's look at another example. So here in the risk adverse, we try to make the person who is less risk adverse, who, don't, who is okay with risk, we let them take the risk part more. Okay? And the person who doesn't like the risk, we make them take the risk part less. Okay? Do you understand influence? Yes. Influence means you have more influence over the risk. So let's look at that example. So a city with a poor downtown area, is there a poor downtown area in Seoul? Um, maybe. Where? Northern part of the center. Do you know the name? I know. What about in Suwon? Is there a poor downtown area in Suwon? Yes. What's the name? Uh, it's the near the the behind the Suwon Suwon station. Okay. So here, Suwon was looking for a developer to make office retail and residential. You understand office retail and residential in this area. There's two main risks: getting approval from the zoning board. Do you understand zoning? So you have to get permission to build offices and so on. That's zoning. And market risk. So market risk is the risk that uh, nobody is going to rent business, right? Nobody is going to buy the office plots and so on. So we have these two different risks. And we have two people. We have the city on one side and we have the developer on the other side. So who do you think is better able to influence the risks? We have two risks. We have zoning and we have market risk. Who is better able to influence the zoning risk? The city or the developer? Who decides the zoning? Cities. City, right? So city can influence this risk better. Developer is more used to this risk dealing with this risk, right? So, the city's attorney, the lawyer, he proposed the city and the developer split the project costs evenly, even if the proposal was turned down by the zoning board. So, the, the lawyer said, if the zoning is unsuccessful, we need to pay 50% costs, 50-50, okay? Before we get the zoning, we have to spend a lot of money millions of dollars to make the planning. Do you understand? It's like gambling. If they give us yes, you can build buildings, then it's okay. If they say no, we lost all our money. And we made the plan, we did everything, and we lost all our money, right? So who should lose the money? They said the city should lose 50% and the developer should both spend 50% each, okay? But the developer rejected this idea. He said the mayor can have influence over the zoning board's review process. You understand the mayor? Yes. 
mayor is the city, the head of the city. So therefore, the city should bear most of the cost of failure in this area. Okay? Since the project would either succeed or fail in the marketplace based on his experience as a developer, so he's good at advertising, okay? He has a good comp networks that he can sell the buildings to. Okay, this is the market risk. So he says, I can take this risk more, and you can take this risk. Okay? So the, he said he should bear the bulk of the risk at that stage. That means most of the risk, bulk. So the final agreement reflected this concept. So the party who had the greatest influence over the outcome of one risk would bear the largest share of this risk. Okay? So the agreement would inc include appropriate incentives to minimize the risk. So here, the zoning board is going to take more of the risk. Why right? 70 30 or 80 20? So the city is going to pay most of the costs at the start for the planning. If the planning is not successful, the city is going to lose the money, not the developer. Okay? Then later, the developer is going to take more of the market risk. We don't sell, we don't sell buildings in the market. Okay? The city is only going to lose a small amount of money. The developer will lose a lot of money. Does that seem fair? Does that seem like a good deal? No. Or it's better to split 50, 50, 50, 50, 50? Which is better? First one. You think 50, 50, 50? No, 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 second. Second one, right? This one is better, right? Why? It's definitely better for the developer, right? Here, if the city doesn't allow the zoning, the developer will lose 50%. Let's say the planning costs, planning costs, what, 10 million, right? Then the developer will lose 5 million. But here, you just you lose 2 million, okay? And the city is deciding the zoning, so the city is going to spend 8 million here. If the zoning is, says no, you're not allowed to build the building, I don't give you permission, that's the decision of the city. So do you think the city is, got, is more likely to say no here or here? They're more likely to say no here, right? Here the city loses 5 million, here the city loses 8 million. Okay, so it's more likely the city will give a positive decision. So the developer is being a little bit clever here as well. But, of course, the city gets some advantage. They may lose money here, but they're going to gain money here. Okay, probably this is going to be a higher amount of money, say 100 million. So this is not going to be 80-20 then, right? It will be 60-40, right? Because it's more money. Okay, so we make the agreement like that, okay? So, are both sides happy with that agreement? Yes. At the start, were the two sides happy? No. No, right? The developer wasn't happy. Two, he doesn't like, he can't influence this risk. He doesn't have any power to influence this risk much. Okay? He likes this one. He can influence this risk. Depends on him, advertising and networks. Okay? If he loses money here, it's his fault. Okay? So, this can make the deal happen. In the first case, 50-50, the developer is going to say, no, I don't want to do the deal. Is that good for Suon? No. No, right? The developer was going to redevelop the bad area of the city. So it would have been a bad result for Suon and a bad result for the developer. So we can make both of the people happy. So do you have any question about that one, influencing the risk? So what's, what can, what's the point of that? They dis decide the risk premium. Mm -hmm. So finish the sentence. The person who has more influence over the risk should take on more the obligation to pay more money. Yes, right? The person who has less influence over the risk can take uh, less obligation, right? So then let's look at assessing risk. Do you understand assessing risk? We talked about bearing risk, I like risk or I don't like risk. We talked about influencing risk, now assessing risk. Assessing risk means I think there's risk, but maybe you don't think there's risk. 
Not that I like or I don't like. Maybe I just think it's a higher risk and you think it's a lower risk. In the case of the chef and the restaurant, they both assess the risk the same. They said it was 50%, 50% chance in the arbitration, right? So let's look at this one. So we have a small developer of a waste disposal facility. Do you understand waste disposal? Waste disposal. Do you understand waste disposal? Waste disposal is uh, you do the police go. Then the waste disposal people come and collect all the things, right? So he had some environmental permit, permits he had obtained for a site. Do you understand environmental permit? That allows you to let out the CO2. So when they collect all the police go, things they're going to burn there or do something. They're going to release some chemical or uh, pollution. So they need to have some environmental permit. So this guy has environmental permits for one site. Do you understand site? Site is land. Okay, and he wants to sell this to a large player, a big waste management person. It was a problem. <clears throat> the state law was not clear. It's not clear that we can transfer, give the, the permits to the other person if there is no uh, faculty on the land. So we have the land here, right? But there's no factory, nothing built on the land. So he had obtained the permit for the land. He can build on the land if he wants, but he didn't build yet. Okay, and now he wants to sell this land to somebody else. Okay? Now the, the thing that's not clear, can he sell the permits? If he builds something, yes, he can sell the permits. But it's not clear. Why? Right? So the buyer wants the seller to make a representation to find out exactly, to hire lawyers, right? Spend a lot of money on lawyers and find out the exact answer before they buy. But the seller didn't want to do this. The seller was an entrepreneur. He started out driving garbage trucks. So he didn't go to university. Maybe he didn't go to high school. He was just driving the truck to collect the police about. And then he saved a lot of money and he started his company. So he's not capable of assessing this risk. Okay? He doesn't know, he has to pay a lot of money for lawyers. He doesn't know which lawyers to call. He doesn't understand about that, right? But on the other hand, the large company, they already have lawyers working for their company. Okay, they have full-time staff about legal and regulatory compliance issues. So discuss with your partner, what's the solution here? This is the last one before the break time. Do you understand the situation? Who can tell me the situation? They want to trade the permission of the, about the environmental pollution. Yes. But they doesn't know about it can be traded. Yes, if it's legal or not, if that trade is legal or not. So they need to check up and make, find out exactly whether it's legal or not. Okay? That's going to cost time and money. So the seller doesn't want to do that. So at the moment we're going to have no deal. The seller says no, I'm not going to do that. So what's the solution? So discuss with your partner. Do you guys understand the situation? Um, in this case, what time to make a legal process? It's going, it's going to find out that it may take a month. Take a month. Mm. 
Do you guys understand? Hmm? You don't understand? So, uh, there is an entrepreneur. Do you understand an entrepreneur? He is, he, he is a waste management entrepreneur. He's managing waste. You understand waste, Solegi? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay? He has land with an environmental permit, but he didn't build a factory. Do you understand factory? If he builds a factory, it's very clear. He can sell the factory and the permit to somebody else. But he didn't build a factory. So it's, the law is not clear. Do you understand the law is not clear? Yes. So they, he needs to solve this legal problem. Okay? He needs to solve, so the, the buyer wants the entrepreneur to solve the legal problem. But the entrepreneur says no, he doesn't want to solve the legal problem because he's not very educated. Okay? He doesn't have a good education. He just understands about waste management. Okay? But the big company, they're very big. So they, they have a, already have lawyers working for their company. So discuss with your partner. What do you think can happen here? How can we solve this? How can we solve this problem? lower the price, right? Of his thing, right? So the seller, you know, makes a reduced sale price. Because the law is not clear about that, he makes the price lower. And then the risk is transferred for the buyer. Okay? So because of this problem, he, he sells it to the buyer with a lower price. It's not clear. So instead of finding out if it's legal or not for the seller, that's a lot of effort and very expensive. He just reduced the price, and then he still gets more than if he paid for the lawyers. He's going to get, still get a higher price. And then the other company get a lower price, but they can use their specialized in-house in their own company already. They have knowledge and lawyers about that. Okay. So we match up the differences in risk. So let's take a break now for uh, 10 minutes.